Caliph Abd al-Malik built the Islamic shrine that has marked the location of where these previous building projects have taken place for over 1300 years. Here are some examples of the archaeological evidence that can be seen on and around Mount Moriah, starting with the latest evidence and working our way back through time. The Dome of the Rock takes us from the present back to AD 692 when it was built. Located just to the north of the western wall, in a prayer hall under this building, are large arches built by Hadrian around AD 130 to give access to the shrine that he constructed on top of Moriah. This pile of stones came from the buildings that stood on top of the Temple Mount. These buildings were destroyed by the Romans in AD 70 and pushed off the Temple Mount platform. The masonry of the western and southern Temple Mount walls dates to the time of Herod the Great. Herod extended the western and southern sides of the Temple Mount platform that already existed. You can still see a seam in the masonry that identifies the place where Herod's extension began. The masonry south of the seam is Herod's addition. North of the seam, some of the masonry belonging to Zerubbabel's Temple Mount still remains. The steps leading up to Herod's temple are seen here. This is one of the entrances to the second temple and you can see the original steps here and some restoration of the steps. Some of the most dramatic evidence of the Babylonian destruction has been excavated here. Walls built by King Solomon have been unearthed here. We are in between the city of David and the Temple Mount here and uh, you see this tower here that's attached to a wall and you see the later masonry above uh, here and then you see the older masonry down below which is from the time of Solomon. Uh, these are the towers and walls that Solomon built to extend the city of David to the north to take in Mount Moriah and build the temple on top. Though the location of David's altar can't be excavated, the city